Hi, this is Ron Strand, and welcome again to Backstage at the Upper Room. Tonight, we're pleased to have comedian Jeff Allen. Jeff, how are you? Good. Backstage. I think backstage. we're on the front stage. We're on the front stage, we're but it was front, backstage it's... because it's before the, before the event. Oh, right. <laughs> so, that's true. Yeah, we've locked the other people out. Yeah, that's a figure of speech. Pounding at the door to get in. <laughs> that's right. So this is, I think, your fifth time at the Upper Room, is it? Is Fourth it? or fifth time? I don't wow. know. Wow. We've had you here a lot. Yeah. You're very popular. Uh, well, very I don't know about that. I just enjoy us. coming here. So <laughs> it's warm. Yeah, no kidding. Well, hey, we just wanted to kind of get to know you a little bit better and, right. um, you know, kind of get your background and so forth. But I'm always interested with comics. In what point in your life do you say, hey, I want to be a comedian? You know what I mean? What is I mean, it that... I mean, it's not part of career day in high school. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know? They didn't talk booth, about that one. There's not a comedy booth in high school. <laughs> yeah. uh, I got in, um, I was working for a jewelry company. I was probably 20 years old, maybe. And someone told me about a comedy club. And I said, what is that? And I had seen some comedians. My brother was a musician. And he had some comedians open for him. Uh, and I thought, wow, that would be the coolest thing if I could do that. Uh, anyway, when I heard about the comedy club, I started showing up every night there. I hung out for like three months before I worked the courage up. And it was Thanksgiving night, 1978, so sometime in November. Uh, I, I went on stage, and they did open mics on Thursdays and Sundays. So Thursday night I go up, Thanksgiving night, and I go back on Sunday. And this really large black MC comes over to me and says, yeah, you're going to have to make some sense tonight. We're still trying to figure out what you said Thursday night. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. I mean, it was really... And they actually let you back, though. And they, well, open mic. Anybody, oh, can get okay. up, yeah, yeah. anybody can get up and do whatever they want right. to do. You know? And they knew because for three months I hung out there. I mean, I knew the guys. They knew yeah. I wanted to do it. Sure. Just never had the courage. Did you just work on material? and just? Well, I, I stole a line from a comedian. Uh, and it got a laugh, so I knew it was the material. Yeah, I knew I could get a laugh. I just needed better material. Right. So in the first joke, uh, the first really routine I ever did, that kind of set the stage for the kind of comedy I do. Yeah. I came in. I was late. I had a Volkswagen Bug. Yeah. That was always breaking down. I have to. I had to park it on a hill, and I'd run it down the hill, pop the clutch, yeah, and I'd sure. get going because right. I didn't have the money to replace the starter. Right. It. So anyway, I was late for a show. And I come running through the door, and they said, well, you're, you're up, you're up. So I ran on the stage, and I just started screaming about the Volkswagen bug. And people were laughing. <laughs> they really and I said, oh, my goodness, if you talk about true things, yeah. and it's usually angst. Right. <laughs> you know, or angry. Yeah. You know, then it works. Well, so, somebody said once that com comedy is sometimes just reality exaggerated, right? Well, that's I mean, it. I mean, yeah. I do what they call coincidental comedy. Yeah. It's something happens in my life, and I'll talk about it, and right. then you embellish it or whatever. And, and eventually you find your voice, your rhythm, your timing, yeah. and it works for me. Right. But the hard part about that is you have to have things happen to you. Yeah. I don't do well sitting in my room making up Yeah, yeah you got to go out and live the experience. Well, you have to. I had a guy tell me that. I was, uh, I was drinking really heavy, and I was hanging out at the, at the – they put us up in these comedy condos. And I was – all I ever did was you know, drink until whatever and then sleep all day. And yeah. I remember – Talking to the comic I was working with who was headlining, I was middle in form, and I said, man, I need to write more material. He goes, well, get out of the house. <laughs> you know? yeah, I go, what it. are you talking about? He says, well, I noticed you talk about things right. that happen in your life, but he says, three days, I haven't seen you leave the house. <laughs> yeah. So what's going to happen? So go right. to the mall. Maybe something will happen. You can talk about it. Yeah, right. So, and he was right. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got to so I started robbing liquor stores. <laughs> yeah, that'll get me a lot of material. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? that's right. <laughs> So you did not start out as a Christian or a clean comic no, necessarily. No, no. Yeah. Was no, a... and I, I um, no, I had an aversion to uh, Christians. I remember I was at college, and the one semester I, I went to college, and they brought in somebody that did a Christian testimony, and I walked out on him. Did you really? Yeah, in the middle of the class. And he goes, you can always tell when God's working on a young heart. They can't even be in the same room with him. And I said, yeah, you got to me. I'm going to get some Tums. And I, and I left. And, uh, yeah, I had uh, – my father told me when I was about 14 or 15 that there, there was no God and to personally stay away from Christians. They're bad people. No kidding. And really? his, his father was a pastor and his brother was a pastor. Wow. So in hindsight, looking back, I, I think something really 
bad happened to my father at church. Uh, yeah, obviously. And he turned his back when he was a young uh, teenager uh, right. on the faith and never, I mean, he really had a problem yeah. with our faith. Yeah. Never so, asked me. Yeah. You know, I committed my life to Christ at 40, and it was the most profound change in my life. And right. my father never asked me why. Really? He never yeah, did? Never did. We never had that conversation. No kidding. And I didn't have the courage. It's funny. He was so intimidating to me. And I have always regretted that, that I didn't have the courage to at least start the conversation. At what point did you tell him after you had... had oh, he knew. I mean, uh, knew. I started working churches. And uh, yeah. he came on, actually saw me do a testimony one day. Oh, did he? But he never bothered to... You know, it was just a non-issue with him. He didn't yeah. want to cause any problems or right. arguments or, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, but, um, yeah, he, uh, my favorite thing he used to mock scripture was, uh, not a hair on your head. They're all numbered. I go, they are. Leave them at a crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And my mother would go, Jeffrey. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. Well, I know you didn't just make a, a, a natural change from being a secular, uh, non, non-faith person to, to coming to faith. You, you had some experiences that brought you to faith, I know. Well, I started a, in a 12-step program. My life imploded through alcohol and drugs, and I walked into a 12-step meeting, and they said, pray. And that really, I, you know, I, my answer was to what? You know, well, right. whatever, you know, your higher power. And I, and I, I always was intrigued by that. that in, in the 12-step program, I think it's the third step that you, you come to believe that a power greater than yourself, yeah. um, you know, can restore you to sanity. And that was the sticking point for me because I never really, again, I, if you're making up a deity, that kind of makes you delusional. So I yeah. understood. So then, but the question was always, okay, it, does God exist? I saw it. I heard people use the language. Right. God, and I saw the changes in, in their lives, and I wanted it, but I just couldn't make something up. Yeah. So I started reading, and I never read a book in my entire life uh, prior to getting sober. And uh, I, somebody put road less, uh, a therapist put road less traveled into my hands, and I was so blown away by that book oh, that really? I just started reading self help. I mean, yeah. uh, John Bradshaw had a trilogy of books on family dynamics and one of the things that it, each book gave me something and one of the things John Bradshaw talked about was in a, in a dysfunctional home the baby of the family which I was is usually the comedian the good natured yeah. one so you read that on print you go wow that's my life I was you right. know, and, you, and that's how and it was funny because I heard a speaker say one day that comedians in a dysfunctional home usually got the worst beatings until they, <laughs> until they got their timing down. <laughs> you, know, you come walking into the storm, you know, and yeah. you go, hey, I got one. <laughs> you know, yeah, you just, that's right. So, okay, maybe next week. Yeah. You know, so, um, but anyway, that resonated. And then uh, the, the codependency was around. I probably still is. I don't know. But uh, I got into Melody Beatty stuff. And yeah. So I read everything but the Bible. It, w it was like, that wasn't, I would, it was a non-issue. I wasn't, you know, occasionally I'd pick it up in a hotel room. <clears throat> but I, it was almost as if God said, I, I need you to exhaust everything man yeah. has printed. Right. You know, because now you can walk into, I, my attitude is this, you can walk into any Barnes and Nobles in, in the country and look at hundreds of shelves of books of man's attempt to find meaning yeah. apart from God. That's for sure. And then the Bible, which hasn't changed in thousands of years, just yeah. sits there begging people to pick it up right because god will speak to you through those words yeah and uh eventually i met a guy that um put put the bible in my hands in my home and prayed for my marriage yeah and um i, I couldn't deny it i really couldn't when i started listening to uh, uh tapes that were uh, sermons that were on the bible and the first one was ecclesiastes which summed up what i came i i, I couldn't put words to it but it summed up my eight year search. Life yeah. without God will have no meaning. So that was an eight year period from the time you started searching. It was, and, and I, I always say this, if, if God had sat me down and said, look, I'm gonna put you through, you and your wife through this for the next eight years, but listen to me, at the end of those eight years, I'm gonna introduce you to my son, Jesus, and you're yeah. gonna know a peace and a, a, that you never knew could exist. Yeah. I would never have signed on. Yeah. Because it was it just a, uh, uh, but it was a process that I had to go through. Some people have those road to Damascus moments yeah. where they get struck. As I've talked to people like that. Right. You know? Yeah. No, man. Somebody shared the gospel with me and bam. Yeah. I got it. Well, right. You know, I had the gospel shared to me and I, did, I didn't get it. And, but again, I had to exhaust yep. all these things. I'm a skeptic by nature. Yeah. So, um, you know, 
I had it exhausted, I guess. So how did that change the career? I mean, you know, you go in from this person who's come out of uh, struggling with substance abuse and so forth, and then now you're, <clears throat> now you're a believer. How does that change the comedy? How does that change your, your well, venues me, and your bookings and all whatever that? Whatever I used alcohol for to cap and suppress came out in a form of rage. Oh. So when I got sober, I got angrier. Did you really? You know, I really wasn't that, you know. <clears throat> um, and I think my wife would agree that um, the biggest change after the, giving my life to Christ was the peace. Yeah. The calm. Right. The material didn't change much. The yeah. attitude changed. The way I delivered it changed. Yeah. Um, my love for her changed. Yeah. Um, you know, when our marriage was falling apart, Tammy will always tell, when people ask her, she said comedy for six, seven years was my therapy. Yeah. And I brought it out on stage and I, and I puked it out on unsuspecting audiences. <laughs> yeah. you know? I really, I was working through so much stuff uh, yeah. personally right. that, again, I do coincidental comedy. Mm -hmm. So it's stuff that comes out and I work inside out. Yeah. And um, I remember sitting on a, in a chair. I worked for years in a stool. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I told Tammy the other night, I, 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 I sat on a chair for the second half of the show. And I had a blast. I was leaning back. I was, you know, completely different. Yeah. When I was working on a chair, I would sit like this. And I would do my comedy like this. Yeah. And I would talk to the people. And at one point, I'm in a hockey rink in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and a midnight show. And I look at this audience. And I said, why are we here? What are you, what are you here for? What are you here for? And it's dead quiet. Really? And a voice in the back goes, just want to hear some jokes. <laughs> <laughs> what and I you... said, that's reasonable. Yeah. I really did. I said, that's a reasonable request. I just want to laugh. Club. <laughs> we just want to laugh. Yeah, you're bringing us down. And you yeah, just came here to laugh. Oh, I had uh, club <laughs> owners calling my agent going, what <laughs> happened to him? What's wrong man? with that guy? He quit drinking, and now it's like he's just <laughs> sappy and melancholy. <laughs> and But I had, I had yeah. issues. I had, you know, everything was just... I was, a, I was a walking wound. Yeah, sure. And uh, so I just wanted to know why anything mattered. Right. Why, does it, why, why, do I, why do I get up and do this every day? Why, what's the point of yeah. being married and having kids? And, and again, I, I didn't ask for this. Right. You know, and now I look at it and I believe that's God says, okay, you got questions. Well, you know, I'll give you the answers. Yeah. But you got you to exhaust all these things. Yeah. There's an answer, believe me, at the end of all of this. Right. But right. for me, it was seven or eight years of just, and, and I had moments, you know. Oh, sure. And, and Tammy, I would tell you, I would come home, you know, and go, I think I got it. And I, the way I can describe it is I was dying of a spiritual thirst. Uh, um, and it's, it's if you're dying of thirst and the only water you can get is coming out where you can scoop it up with your hands. Yeah. And that's what I was getting. I was getting a handful of, of, of stuff right. uh, that would quench it, but then it dissipate. Right. And that's the best way I can describe it. So I had all this the New Age, Buddhism, uh, eventually humanism, Ayn Rand. I, I loved Ayn Rand. Mm -hmm. I really did. If I was not a Christian, I would be a, an objectivist um, yeah. Ayn Rand disciple. Right. I, I loved her stuff. Yeah. And um, it's funny because when I, I, came, I became a believer, and I was living in Arizona at the time, and the Arizona Republic, the newspaper, did a survey of their re readers the two most influential, the, the top 10 most influential books in their lives. Number one was the Bible. Number two was uh, Atlas Shrugged. Oh, no kidding. And I knew them. I knew them both. Yeah. And I said, I choose the Bible. Right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And, and she missed it. Yeah. She missed it. Wow. So you've, you've, your, your comedy has taken you really all over the world. I mean, you've, I, I know you entertained the troops in Bahrain. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you've, you've been the uh, keynote, or is it, the uh, premier comedian at the two of the inaugural. Uh, well, I was at one of the galas. I, galas. I was at the inaugural galas. There's there's dozens of galas yeah, sure. uh, for the inaugurations, yeah. and I was for Bush and uh, and then Trump uh, in 2016. Yeah, and this is the first time I publicly said that. Is that right? So now I'm expecting this inundated, <laughs> yeah. you know, to be inundated with all the with all the loving, right? All the love that comes from well, that yeah, side yeah. of the aisle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, we're not. I'm, I'm sure they're going to embrace me. You know, <laughs> I had we posted pictures of our of our boxers with cropped ears, and well, when I the, had people, 
I can't follow. Oh you yeah, anymore. no, I know. Can't There's follow you anymore. But yeah. when the president or his people call you, no matter who it is, you go do it. Right. Well, that was Sh uh, a friend of mine, Shonda uh, yeah. Pierce, right. uh, was invited to, uh, and she said that exact same thing. She posted on Facebook yeah. with pride, right, and just got hammered. And she posts up. She goes, "If any president asked me yeah. to come, I would do it." Right. You know. Yeah. And I would have. I, I, I would have. You know. Right. Done it for the previous. Well, president. we're called to be. How do you not? Like, no, no, yeah, how do you no not get invited to D.C. to do something for the president? Sure. How do you not do that? Yeah, exactly. You know, wow. And uh, they just didn't ask. Yeah. <laughs> what a shock. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you've come to the journey that you've come through, and that you're Me here too. tonight. And uh, we're looking forward to a great time. Yeah. And, well, uh, you know, this is one of my favorite places. Yeah. Well, thank you. I of all the that. places I've worked. Is that really? Certain. Well, that's that's really a. I don't compliment. want to say top five because you'll ask me where do I <laughs> yeah, fit in that? Where do I, okay. Why the other four? Yeah, you know. So <laughs> we'll just say this is my favorite place. This is your favorite. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff, yeah. and uh, thank you, Ron. Thanks for doing that, yeah. and thanks again for watching backstage at the Upper Room. <laughs>